Good to be here. Good to be here um, in New York. And you guys are, this one is the Chicago, um, is this really the Chicago show? What show is this? Or are we just basically all over the place? Now? Uh, we're just combining it all oh, right We're combining now. everything. Well, it's good. I've been doing these shows for, I think, probably over 10 years now. So this will be the first video show I'm doing, which is kind of good for me because this is what I do every day. So a little bit about me. Um, my name is John Carisco. A lot of people know me as Day Trader Rockstar. I'm a host of a trading show every single day since um, 2007. Live on the air, I trade live. I started trading uh, for myself professionally uh, full time in 19, uh, 1996. So I think that's uh, well over 20 years of trading. And over, uh, and then I decided to kind of take my trading online and on the air because I used to be, um, I used to actually be a pirate DJ too, but I kind of combined both things. I like to play music, I like to uh, trade stocks. And uh, so we combined it both here at Day Trading Radio and we go on the air from eight o'clock in the morning all the way to four. So this is kind of, kind of a good thing for me and I'm happy to do it with you guys. And um, you know, the, the hundreds and thousands of listeners out there you know, and over the years, I get so many questions on especially beginner traders and stuff. And I've slowly, slowly over, over the years have built it, um, a methodology of trading to be successful. And now I've become more of an educator. Um, and, and I think trading is a little bit easier because I've learned the patience and learned the, you know, the ups and downs of trading. I've learned the pitfalls. And as you know, I could say, well, and I think a lot of experienced traders could say this, I've learned how to lose money easy. You know, I've learned every way to lose money. And when we Order tried, submitted. And I'm, Order I'm sorry Order about some submitted. of the, <laughs> the background submitted. noise. I am trading Order right now submitted. and there's some, actually some trades going on. So I apologize that for that. If you hear anything, I'll explain that after. Um, so my goal is to, um, teach you the correct way of trading. And I know when a newer trader gets into the market, there's so much out there. I can, I, you know, I use the analogy of a, of a, a you know, a person going, walking into a casino with a bunch of cash. You can just lay down um, at any table and try to make money. Well, that's basically what you're doing at a, at a computer every day. You have a, an account and you could get into a stock and just push a button and try to make money. But just like a casino, you, you know, the house tends to have the, uh, the edge on this. And it's just like that with trading. I mean, there's other people trading against you. There's, you know, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. You know, it really would be. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And of course, I, I'm always required to talk about the disclaimer that trading uh, futures, options, stocks, and everything else involves a lot of risk. And you can lose if all your money you know, and that's probably going to happen at one point if you're a beginner trader. So let's not uh, sugarcoat it. It is not an easy job. So just remember that you should not trade with money that you can afford, can't afford to lose. And everything that goes along with that, um, with that uh, disclaimer is true. All right. So um, when I start off, you know, I want to pretend I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually doing my show. I'm pretending I'm doing my show right now. And I discuss this stuff all the time. You know what made me a successful trader over t over time. In the beginning, it was just about you know learning the you know I didn't have a, a mentor or anything. I didn't have anybody who was really teaching me. I had to learn the ins and outs. I became a technical trader along the way. I you know, but I also was involved in boiler rooms and so's bandits and 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 things that maybe a lot of traders wouldn't even be familiar with because you're much younger uh, when I, when they were trading fractions. Um, you know, momentum trades. I was a big fan of uh, hit and run trading. Um, Kevin Haggerty and Jeff Cooper, and they had all these technical setups and stuff. I'll give them a shout out. And there's a lot of great traders out there. But over time, I, I, I learned that um, I should whittle out the things that didn't work consistently for me and hold on to the things that worked for me and kind of put those into a you know, and then trading became easier because I wasn't over trading and over trading is the death of most traders out there because the more you're in the market, the more the market has a chance of taking you for a ride or you losing money in the market. So over time, I realized there were some really, really great opportunities in the market, but it required two things on my part. 
you know, two things that everyone Order filled. Order canceled. Order canceled. <laughs> I want to actually turn that off on my side here. Um, two things that uh, everyone has, but you have to develop, and it's not hard to develop. It's patience and discipline. And when I teach people a certain setup, and this is again the name of the um, this presentation was my three best setups, and I realized through time uh, constraint, constraints that I'm not going to be able to go through everything. So I wanted to really focus on my my favorite setup, my perfect setup, and really kind of make you understand how important it is to have that setup come to you. You know, let let the market come to you. And this setup is um, that you could use trading futures, you could use trading stocks, you could trade um, options with it, you could trade anything with it. You could trade commodities. I have traders that trade Bitcoin with this setup. It's just, a, it is a, absolutely the, fan, the most, the, you know, it's the holy grail for me for not, you know, really believing there is no truly, true, true holy grail, but there is something as close as you could get to that as long as you can identify these levels and wait for them to happen. So over the years, I developed what I thought, you know, what I want to call as an independent trader, as a professional trader that I'm working myself in my own office. You know, I have to have that discipline and that patience to wait for this certain setup. So I had to develop a business plan. And I said, well, for be serious, you know, for a, to be a business, to make this a living, you have to consider the business. And every business has a business plan. And that business plan has to, you have to have a business plan. You just can't get into the market every morning, wake up and just go in there randomly and try to just make sense out of the market. You have to have a business plan. You know, that's very important. You know, it's so important if you're making money. It's like, again, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Everyone would um, be trying to do it, but most people blow up. So I, um, I developed a business plan and wrote it down that way. I had a criteria and that criteria kept me inside my box. You know, that was kept me in a very tight space and a very tight box. I would not go out of there and risk myself. I wouldn't over trade. Um, and then I wrote down this business train. So this is kind of a little criteria that we're going to go over. I think that every trader should have, you know, you should know why you're getting into a trade order entry criteria. You should know why you're getting out of a trade. All right. Um, you should always have a stop in place, you know, automatically, you know, nothing, nothing is going to say that the world is, you know, going to be fair for you. You could have news, breaking news, and the market could drop drastically or pop and you should protect yourself. You had, you had to have some type of risk management. All right. And how and when to increase your position size. How do you increase? How do you, how do you get better as a trader? You know, when you start off, you have a certain amount of capital. But as that capital grows, how do you increase your trading size? So all these things I've tried to develop and put into this business plan over the years to kind of make it automated, not automated, but just give me something that I could fall back on and say, I'm not going to fall out of side, you know, fall away from my business plan, you know, how to set up your charts tools for the trade, all these different things, starting balances, all these things I try to put together for listeners and, and members of day trading radio to kind of um, get started. And I think that's the most important thing. So what is that great setup? You know, you know, well, not many people know, of, know of it. A lot of people might know of it, you know, divergence trading. Uh, you could divergence, you could use divergence trading, um, with different indicators, but the indicator I use mostly is the stochastics. Stochastics are um, the indicator I use for divergence trading. And I'm not going to go into a whole history of stochastics. I can tell you the stochastics were developed back in 1950 by a man named George Lane. He had a trading group. And back in the day, you know, these traders were really, really developing these words. RSI came about. All these traders came up with these uh, you know, these famous traders, you'll hear the names put on, put on their indicators, the Bollinger Bands, the RSI, the um, MACDs, you know, all these different things that have been developed over the years. Well, the stochastics were also developed. Uh, percentage R, um, 
let me see. I'm going to jump to the next one. So here's the uh, stochastics right here. So that is my number one indicator that I use. All right. I learned everything I could about the, uh, the stochastic. I even got a hold of the person who invented this methodology, George Lane. I, uh, I even was gifted his, some personal books from him and, you know, notebooks from the classes that he used to give back in the day. And I went over these and I saw there was a correlation between what he was teaching and the markets. And I added my own little things, years and years of years of tweaking this and following it and charting it and realizing, wow, something really is works here. So what can I add to this? So the stochastic divergence was the key, but I added different things to it. I added, all right, what happens if a stochastic divergence happens on a, on a, um, a confirmed trend line, or if it happens on a moving average, or if it happens in a recognizable pattern, support and resistance line, or some candlesticks. These are things that I've added. Now, I know we're limited to time here, and there's a lot to go over, and normally I could talk for eight hours a day, and that's what I do. And right after I get off with you, I'll be back on the air, daytradingradio.com, talking about this stuff. So feel free to ask me any questions anytime. But you know, this is the key. This is the key is having your divergence set up alongside one of these other indicators. These other indicators are very, very important. And these are basic ones. Everyone knows what a, a, a trend line is. Or if you don't know what a trend line is, that's another lesson. Uh, moving averages. Again, um, recognizable patterns. I kind of put them down. Wedges, channels, one, two, three patterns. And again, I apologize if I'm rushing so much and I seem to be talking fast because I know we're limited to time and I have a lot to go over. So again, we're going to break down some of this for you right now. But before we could do that and understand the, the methodology, we also have to understand, you know, again, my business line, what am I looking for? What is going to keep me in the game? Well, for me, I'm only going to look for a certain amount of certain type of trade. The trade for me is going to be a divergence trade, long or short, one minute, three minute, five minute, 60 minute, or daily time frames. All right, a divergence trade. Now I'm going to explain what that is. The other type of trades I'm looking for is a triple stochastic flag setup. Again, another one that I kind of coined this. I kind of made this uh, setup my own. I, you know, I take I take pride in saying this is my observations in the markets that have gotten me to a point where I can identify a real true flag and what a flag really means. A 200 EMA breakdown channel line bounce. It's another technique that I've over the years realized that it works more often than it doesn't. So I want to have that really. Um, and then oversold stochastic channel line bounce. All these things are important to me. So these are the four, four trades that I'm searching for each day. And if they don't show up, then I'm not trading. I'll, I'll, I'll play some good music for you. I'll teach. I'll do other things. But once they show up, we strike and we make money. All right. So let's go into a market mindset here. All right. What are your goals into trading? <clears throat> Again, many different people out there, many different levels. You have Experienced traders, people trade in 30, 40, 50 years. We have traders that are just brand new, trading less than a year, and they have great, great goals in mind. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be, I want to make this amount of money and stuff. Um, and a lot of people used to, and I used to do this myself. I used to set goals. You know, I used to say, all right, I want to make $500 a day. And I realized trying to do that, if I was not making $500 a day in the last half an hour of the day, I'd be reckless and trying to make a lot of money because I needed to get my goal, you know, and that wasn't, I, I said, you know what, that's, that's a trap for me. So I didn't believe in that anymore. Goals are set up for failure. It forces you to take trades that are not set up. Yearly, the same thing. Um, long term, making money means nothing if you can't stay healthy, exercise your body. And that's another thing for traders, you know, and I always talk about this because I have to deal with things myself and for me and, and um, you know, pa so passionate about trading. And I realize how much time I spend in my seat, how much time I am just watching the days and you could sit here and, and you're passionate about trading. Like I'm passionate about trading your day flies by and each and every day and you go by and you don't even know what's going on outside. And next thing you know, you're just 
you know, you're eating and sitting. <clears throat> so you have to, um, you have to get up and you have to exercise. So make that part of your routine. All right. Make that part of your routine. So I talk about this and again, I'll, I'm, I'm free to, you know, I would happy to uh, share this whole webinar with anybody who wants it, you know, cause a lot of things I might just jump over. But again, after, um, you know, after learning all this, I started, you know, making my business plan. And when I made my business plan, I wanted to write that out. For me, that was something that I needed to do. I needed to write something out to keep me focused. I'm not the most focused person, so I had to do what I had to do to focus. And that's why I wrote, wrote the business plan. And it all starts with the divergent signal. And that's what we're going to try to get through a basic part of that today, the divergent setup, how important that is and how, you know, just have to go with this. All right. All right. I want to try to make this a little bit bigger for you. What is a divergence? All right. Basically, a divergence, when we're talking about the price of a stock, price of a futures, price of Bitcoin, price of um, Forex, is when the price of an asset or an, in, uh, and of an indicator, index, or any related asset move in the opposite directions. In technical analysis, traders make transactions uh decisions by identifying situations of divergences where the price of the stock and instead of i'm going to put this in layman's terms all right again george lane developed this in the 1950s all right it was a momentum-based indicator and where the price is moving it, and it cal calculates and again it's going to be tough to understand the first time around but what the stochastics are doing is measuring the close of each candle on each candlestick, if you're looking at a one-minute candle, you're, 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 you know, you're looking at a one-minute chart, you're taking each one of those one-minute candles and the closing price on that candle is being put into the formula of the stochastics. And the stochastics are putting that formula and you're gonna measure that out. It's gonna, get, it's gonna read out a line, percentage K line and the percentage D line. Percentage K line is a regular line, which is measured out and the percentage, percentage D line is the moving average that's based, that's placed on that K line. And now we use percentage D as our signal line. So when the price is, and again, for newer traders, you might need a little refresher on this, but when price is moving down, here you have a low, stock moves up and come back down, we make a lower low. Stock moves up, move down, we make a lower low. Between a lower low, a low, and a lower low, the stochastics are reading the close of the candlestick internally. You don't really see this, but you see the stochastics as a line written underneath the stock chart on your indicators. And you'll all of a sudden, you'll see that stochastics are rotating between zero and 100. It's a range. And that zero and 100 basically represents the candle. Zero represents the bottom of the candle, 100 represents the top of the candle. So that's 100% and 0%, 0%, 100%. So when you have a number that's being read out on the stochastics, that number represents the percentage of that candle where that, where that price is closing at over time based off the time frame and based off the length of the, the stochastics. Now, stochastics usually you'll see stochastics defaulted to either 14.3 or 9.3. And this all comes from George Lane. George Lane originally started this and he, he put these numbers down. And believe it or not, there's an interesting story about how stochastics came about. And uh, I think there was a bunch of Polish um, cement mixers or they were making some kind of, um, doing some kind of construction. They used a lot of the formula formulation of making this making some construction material and they added that in. It sounds bizarre, but it's true. Um, but anyway, we start to see the rotation when the market is making a low and we get a little bounce, then we make a lower low. What happens is the first low of the market making that, making that low, the stochastics also make a low. But when we bounce with the stock and the stock comes down and makes a lower low, it goes lower than the previous low, the stochastics, actually make a higher low. And what that's telling us internally, that the candle is closing higher on the candlestick 
on the candle over a set of period of time. So we're seeing momentum has changed. Momentum has now changed. And we're being able to read that. So this is no longer a reactive indicator. It's actually a proactive indicator because the stock is actually at the lows where we know that we should be buying instead of chasing it. Most indicators are going to be, you're going to be chasing these indicators higher. You know, most indicators, if they're worth their weight, will give you a buy signal and a sell signal. If they don't, then why are you even using them? The great thing about stochastics are when you have that lower low, you're at the lows. You're at, you're, you're not running up, but you're starting to see at the lows that stochastics are starting to turn up. So it's, you're able to buy at the lows because of the higher low on the stochastics. Now I'm gonna go into more detail on this. Same thing on the bearer side. Stock price is making a high. Oh God, you believe this? I gotta, hold on. All right, sorry about that. I had to turn, turn the window down. Um, when the price is making a higher high, you have a high, then you have a higher high. The same thing applies. Stochastics make a high with the first high, but make a lower high on, on this rotation. So that is your bearish divergence. So it's, it works both on the buy side and on the sell side. So we're gonna continue on. Now with George Lane, let me have it up here. When George Lane, um, develop this. He got, you know, he wanted to kind of describe what was going on. And how do you describe momentum? What's a good way of describing momentum? We had a great, great example for this. He goes, picture a rocket. That rocket shoots up in the air. You know, if, I don't know if anybody's into model rocketry or just knows the concept of rockets in an engine, all right, or anything like that. If you, if you have an engine and you're pushing something, Real fast, real fast, pushing it up. So a rocket's a good example of that. And you shoot that rocket up in the air and it's pushing it, accelerated, and going up. And all of a sudden the engine dies out. Engine dies out. What happens to the rocket? Now, I wish I had a chat room. Up. I don't even know where the chat room is on this, but I can't tell if anybody's answering this correctly. But I want to tell you, the rocket continues to move higher, all right? Here you have the rocket going up, but the engine cuts off, but the rocket has the momentum to turn it up a little bit higher and higher before it starts rolling over. That's the concept of the divergence and a concept of stochastics. Engine cuts out, you're able to spot that, but you don't, don't see it in the price until a little bit later, but you're able to see it before the price starts to roll over. That's why it's, you know, it's a proactive indicator. So it makes a lot of great sense. It cuts out, momentum it drops off, price goes up a little bit more and then rolls over and there's your divergence. All right, so here's my entry levels and what I call my rules on a divergence, all right? Stage one of the divergence should have stochastics under 20. Now, again, when I say there's a lot to go into this. There is a, a ton of stuff to go into on this. But again, I hope um, you guys follow up with this with me and I've, you know, I'd love to teach more about this. Um, stage one of the divergence should have the stochastics under 20. Now what I mean by stage one is when the price is coming down and you have a low and your stochastics, here we have, you have two lines usually that are defaulted on stochastics when you put them on your chart. The two lines are usually the 20 line and the 80 line. Even though they go from zero to 100, the 20 line is marked off and the 80 line is marked off. So when the price is at the lows, the stochastics have to be under that 20 line. The price will bounce. The stochastics will bounce. The price will come down quickly take out the previous low, but the stochastics have to hold above the 20 line. So you have a lower low on the price, a higher low on the stochastics. That is your divergence, all right? So now we go back up here and we say stage one, stochastics have to be under 20, 
the low should bounce, bring the stochastics back above 20. For the divergence to set up, you want to see a pretty quick move with the price back down underneath the previous low of the price. All right. But the stochastics hold above that 20 line. Now, this could be tricky sometimes because you find out this works so well. Sometimes you try to say, you start to jump the gun saying, all right, 20, maybe it's, this is down here around five and this came down to about 10. And this technically is a divergence because the higher low and the lower low is a divergence. But I try to teach that the steeper the, steeper the divergence, the better the setup. You know, we'll notice that over time. And you could, you know, you will be able to adjust and adapt and, and, and make your criteria a little stricter. I always think that it's best to give, you know, the best, the best practice makes perfect or what's the perfect practice makes perfect. All right. Not just practice. You, you practice wrong and you're not going to get it, but perfect practice makes perfect. So you have to have the best setup and always look for the higher rotation on that stochastic bounce. I say 20 is a good way to start, but if this was crossing up above 30 and this was making a low, that would be a better divergence and probably a better move overall. The other thing is divergence signals are the best when they're lined up with lower trend line. So if you have an underlying trend line and you come down with a lower low to it, that's even better. And we talked about that in our original, our original um, you know, here, stochastic divergences on confirmed trend lines. That's one of our go-to trades. Now you can have a stochastic divergence on a moving average, you got it on a, right in a pattern, on a support and resistance line, on a VWAP or whatever. But that divergence, the more it happens on, on um, you know, something that you recognize out there, the better it is. All right, let's continue on here. And now I'm going to start going over some. At the same time, the stochastics hold above the 20 line and then turn up. But this is another example here. Now, this is what we call a double bottom divergence. But most times, I, you know, I have a saying I say on the show, all right? You show me a divergence, I'll show you a market that moves in the direction of the divergence 90% of the time. All right? That's, that's an incredible, you know, uh, like I said, you, I could look back at a chart and most of the time, the stochastics and everything, moving average is all gro grooving along and everything's all hunky-dory. And then all of a sudden you'll see a low and a lower low, but a higher low in the stochastics. And from that point on, look at the move you get. Nine times out of 10, you, I'll show you that setup. Here you have it again. In this case, it's not a lower low, but it's a double bottom. And I will tell you right now, 25 years of experience, a double bottom is as strong, if not stronger, and a lower low. And I don't know, you know, the reason 100% maybe it's because of the support level, but a double bottom works just as good. It doesn't have to tick it lower. And over time, you'll realize that you don't even have to have a lower low. It has to be the relationship between the price and the stochastic. So if the price comes down to the low and the stochastics turn up way before, it should relative be relative to the price. So the stochastic should come probably back down here. The, if, the, if, the sto, if the price is coming back down, the stochastics would make sense to come back down here. So if it doesn't and starts moving back up compared to that price, then you have a divergence and that's the move. All right. Next, next one here. These are the S&P future contracts that I'm trade, you know, trade a lot. All right, and again, well, I, this could be on a one minute time frame. It could be on a five minute time frame. It could be on a 60 minute time frame. It could be on a daily time frame. When I send out a, a, a watch list each week, I want to make sure that the watch list has divergences. You know, why would I settle for something less than going for the best? All right, so any type of, and again, if we're waiting for th something, maybe there's no, no divergences out there. We're waiting, we're maybe trading the futures. And if the futures give me the same setup where we have a low and a lower low and a higher low and it crosses back up and then we start to see that move. Now I didn't follow up and show you, I'm just showing divergences, but you probably, if I let this go, you'd probably see a chart go straight up from this level. 
Um, let's see if we could uh, show you a better example of that right now. Let me just jump to the next one. And again, um, talk about stochastics for a second. Stochastics is an indicator on your chart. Most charting services come with standard indicators, moving averages, RSI, MACDs, um, you name it, Bollinger Bands, Keltner, Keltner Channels, um, VWAP, you know, anything. There's so many different things out there, moving averages, and et cetera. When you look at stochastics, they'll come out and they'll have two lines. You have a percentage K and a percentage D. When I adjust my stochastics and I want to get a signal from my stochastics, I don't trade crossovers. What I do is I take, normally you'll have dual um, stochastic lines on here, percentage K and percentage D. What I do is I take that percentage K and I'll make it transparent using the indicator, you know, whatever um, I can, the parameters. I'll just go into the charting program. I'll say percentage K, change the color to black if my chart's black or make it transparent. I don't want to see it. I want to see the signal line. So all, you're only seeing one line. I'm not trading crossovers, across, you know, any type of crossovers on stochastics. But what I'm doing is I'm just trading. The, and again, here the market's moving down, moving down, moving down, moving down. Here you have holding above the 20 line, a low, a lower low, and kind of holding above the 20 line. Now you have different stochastics. And again, this is a little bit more advanced stuff. But in the beginning, you could just st stick with the 14.3 or the 9.3. Usually on my charts, I have 9.3 on the top. This is 14.3. It's just an older chart. But normally I set it up with a 9.3, the 14.3, and the 60.10. And the 6010 represents a five minute time frame. And that's a, an advanced um, indicator that uh, I have to teach you more about that in the future. Um, and you're going to get a move out of that range that you've been doing. Also, another thing I will tell you from my experience in trading stochastics and divergences, when you have a pure stochastic divergence in a tight channel, if I put trend, trend lines here, this is an image right now, I can't put the trend lines in here, but if I put a lower trend line and a, a rise in it, we'd see this real tight channel that this is going down. When you have a divergence, nine out of 10 times, your target will be outside of the channel that's already there. So it order, order, already gives you a target to shoot for. You're gonna get outside the range of the channel that the divergence happened in here. So you're gonna kind of break through the moving averages, you're gonna break higher, break higher. All right. Don't tell me the day is already over again. Um, JP Morgan, you could do this with stocks also. Same, same concept. You just want to watch the price level versus uh, the previous low to this low, low, higher low. Move up, channel, breakout. I'll speed it up a little. As all this has happened over the years, what I did over the years, I realized how important these things were. And I used to get up in the middle of the night to trade these overnight. If you, for the future traders out there, once you start realizing the importance of these divergences and how, how profitable they are, you'll, you'll get addicted to them and you'll start saying, I can't miss any of these. So I started automating this stuff. I automated it and made an automated program to identify these divergences for me. Right now, a little plug, it's offered to uh, members at Day Trading Radio. We have a, a ch uh, we have a bot that people could watch or even run to identify and trade these divergences. So this is something that I think uh, is super important. I did not want to miss any more of these divergences. So I've identified and wrote a uh, bot to identify the divergences. And now this is something you want. I don't want to miss these. I automated it. And now we don't miss any of those. Same thing happens on the sell side. And I know I'm running out of time, but you basically you're looking at the same thing. Your first high, your higher high, a high and a lower high, and that's your move down. Your targets are always going to be for your first rotation. Whatever time frame you're using, 
if you use it in a one minute time frame, when your stochastics rotate down on that one minute time frame, get oversold, you should consider taking profits. If you're doing it on the five minute time frame, it's probably going to take a little longer time. You probably have a bigger profit. Same thing on a daily. If we have a divergence on a daily, we'll probably hold that for average five to seven days, four to seven days. If you're looking at a one minute time frame, you're holding average four to seven minutes. So four to seven candles per divergence. All right, here's the sell side divergence, same thing. Um, sometimes you'll have a big candlestick here that just spikes above the high, but the stochastics here rotate down low. That is your signal to short. If you have a rising wedge pattern, that's another good signal to short. Um, I know we're coming close to the end of the uh, presentation. I know there's probably questions that uh, are supposed to be asked. So I'll try to, um, there's a lot of things we didn't cover and I, I said I would definitely uh, be willing to come back and, and finish up the, uh, the webinar. I knew this was gonna be a lot of stuff to cover in a half an hour. I don't know if I can continue on, I will. Uh, but if you wanna take questions, there is position sizing that you have to go into on this. I'll just finish up here. Um, Divergence is so important. I just stress that. Let me say, I got all these examples. This will all be available to you. Um, again, just great examples of just looking through the day. This is like on United Parcels. You could do this on a daily chart, a lower low and a big move. Here, the lower low and a higher low, big move up. Lower low and a higher low, big move up. On a daily, your first rotation is, it already gives you entry. And because it's overbought, you should be taking profits on that. Easy trades. These are all easy trades. Wedge hey, patterns and, and coil stochastics are very important. Again, divergences and a coil stochastic, one of the greatest setups of all time. Uh, you have the low and the higher low, the low and the lower low, but inside of a, a channel and you're gonna get that breakout, everything's gonna break out together. So as long as you continue just to wait for these setups to come to you, it is, um, it is golden, it is golden here. Let me um, scroll, hey John, scroll we down need to here. wrap this it up kind here. of a little um, cheat sheet I made. If you wanna look at different, um, where you should place your stop on a divergence, you should always place your stop one tick under the divergence low. So what I mean by that, if you have a divergence here, a low and a lower low, and you take that entry and a higher low on the divergence, you put your stop underneath the diverge, that low of the divergence. You put that stop in there and you have a, you know, you can put a, any type of uh, automated, you know, trailing stop or whatever, but that is your initial low because that will protect you. So. The same thing on the short side, if you had a short divergence, this over here, I didn't even mention it, but it was a double top, lower divergence, you put your stop above that candle right here. But you don't have to worry, you know, and that way you're just, you're, you're perfect. You, you know, you're golden at that point. So that's what I try to do. Place your one tick under the divergence. Profit is the first rotation, second profit. Uh, you could be moving averages and stuff, reversal candles to the downside, same thing on that. Divergence is more of that. Um, the other thing I John. like to use is candlesticks on these. And candlesticks are very important. So uh, there's only five candles I like to uh, look at, maybe six. The hammer and the shooting star are the opposite. Hammer is a bottoming, the shooting star is a topping. So you have a, you know, lots of times a divergence will happen with these candles. Uh, buy side divergence will happen with a, a hammer. Uh, sell side divergence will happen with a shooting star. Very important to learn just a few candles. You don't have to pull out the whole Nissan book and kind of go through all the candles. You just need a couple good candles. Bullish engulfing patterns and bearish engulfing patterns. Very important. That anything that takes out the lows or takes out the highs and reverses, those are going to give you divergences. And if they come along with a reversal candle, you're in the money. You know, the, the chance of you making money in this market is going to be great. Pearson pattern is the same thing. We take out the lows, close above 50% into the candles. Same thing on the dark cloud cover, which is the opposite of the Pearson pattern. We gap higher and then close 50% underneath the previous candle. Hey, These John. are some of the candles we want to use. And then the comparison of using divergences 
on the SPY and futures. You want to use this, you could trade these options, SPY options using divergence. You don't have to put down a lot of money at all. Instead of, you know, you're not going to buy SPY, SPY, um, you're not going to buy a SPY, uh, what do you call it, shares at $300, $200 a share, right? But you can buy options on the SPY or you can buy futures or the MES, the micros, and trade it the same way. And I, I go into detail on how much you can make versus each one. And, um, and what hey, you John, can make we need to wrap it up. The money at, at hand. Um, hey, John, can you hear me? Again, these are the percentage moves you get from this. There's a lot going into this, and I'm just happy to be here with you. I'm going to kind of wrap things up so maybe we could take some questions. Like I said, I built a lot of indicators to help us identify these trades. They all could be found at Day Trading Radio. A little plug for all the members out there that came out and, and uh, supported this here. We're broadcasting live every day. The RockBot is something that I developed that identifies all these divergences. Um, that's what the RockBot does. This is an example of it, just uh, trades it. You can actually have it traded. And, hey, John, do you, um, do you have any contact we'll information? There and let's see if there's any questions, all right? It, we're out of time for questions. Uh, do you have a... uh, the opportunity to do this for everyone. And if you have any questions, I'm here for you. All, all right. right, thanks, John. I don't know, I had my volume off. I hope you weren't trying to get in touch with me. I, I just realized it was off. It's, that's okay, I was. Um, thank you I'm for like, coming. I'm going on, no one's gonna stop me. Yeah. <laughs> definitely gonna have to wrap it up here. So we appreciate your time. All right, you're gone. We're gone, right? No questions. <laughs> uh, we yeah, we're we're running 12 minutes behind here, so we got to keep moving. I hijacked the show. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Day trading radio rocks. <laughs> I'll see you guys.